Hi everyone, my name is Nick Sinconi and I'm a developer advocate with Thomson Reuters. In this video, I'm going to highlight some of the key elements in creating a simple real-time streaming news monitor using the Thomson Reuters Electron platform. I have five main topics to cover. First, I'll provide a general overview of the environment, where the content lives and how I can access it. Then, I'll give a live demo showing the capabilities of this simple monitor. Next, I will outline the core technology components used to build the component, followed by some details related to how I built and interfaced with the Electron platform. Finally, I will highlight some cool little things that simplify development. So, let's get started. I want to give some context in terms of what and where this data lives and the Thomson Reuters platform your application will need to access. The Thomson Reuters global network provides a wealth of content including real-time streaming services such as market data quotes, trades, and news. For our purposes here, I will only cover real-time streaming news through the Thomson Reuters service called MRN or Machine Readable News. To programmatically access MRN, I will need to interface with the Electron platform, which is a real-time streaming service backend. Programmatic access to this platform can be achieved in a number of different ways. However, with the release of the Electron WebSocket API, I have significantly greater number of options to programmatically access. In my case, I've chosen to create an HTML-based application utilizing JavaScript. For more details related to the Electron WebSocket API, there is a webinar available on the Thomson Reuters developer website. I will include a link to that webinar in the description box of this video. Before I dive into the details of the application, I want to first show you what it looks like in action. So let's download and run the widget within a browser. Moving to my desktop, Within my browser, I'm showing the source code available within GitHub, which a link will be included in the description box of this video. Before I download, I want to first point out that this repository depends on the submodule TR WebSocket controller. I will talk about this shortly, but at this point, we need to ensure you specify the recursive option when cloning. Okay, let's grab the URL. And I'm going to clone this repository from the command line. Ensure I specify the recursive option. Okay, let's try to run this thing. Navigate down. We're going to want to load the news object.html file within our browser. You, of course, need to point your application to the WebSocket server. So let's do that. Let's grab the JavaScript file. Let's navigate down to the section which contains the connection details. Right here. And specify your server and port. In my case, EWA 15,000. Let's save this and we're going to reload this widget. Okay. The first thing to be aware is the status window down at the bottom. If for some reason you feel nothing is happening, click here. In my case, I'm seeing where I'm connecting, whether successful or not, and also the result of my login. Finally, you should see an indication that the widget has requested for the headlines and stories if all went well. Assuming this happens, the headlines will eventually start rolling in.
From a high level point of view, exactly what is this application doing? MRN provides multiple data feeds. Within this application, I'm using the data feed that provides real-time news, which is comprised of headlines and their associated stories. When requesting for any data feed from MRN, you are effectively opening up a fire hose of streaming content. As you can see, I'm receiving news headlines as they occur in real time. Simply selecting a headline will show the story below. When looking at the details of the headlines, I've included the Reuters Instrument Code, or RIC, within the display, which effectively represents the assets or companies that are mentioned or affiliated with this story. At the top of the widget is a simple filter capability. With this, I can narrow down my view to only show specific companies as specified by my filter. As I start typing, you can see how the headline display filters based on my selection. The functionality in this widget is intentionally simplistic to demonstrate the basic concepts of bringing in news to your browser within a simple monitor. Okay, now that you have a basic understanding of the functionality, let's pop back to the slides while I will go into a little more detail of what is happening under the hood. As I mentioned, MRN presently provides multiple data feeds, each published as structured text messages. The real-time news feed is sourced from news alerts and stories from Thomson Reuters and many other third-party news sources. It contains the headline, story body text, and associated metadata tags. It is this particular data feed used in this demonstration, and it is identified using the name MRN underscore story. Other MRN data feeds available are TRNA, or Thomson Reuters News Analytics, and TRSI, Thomson Reuters Sentiment Indices. TRNA provides different scores for each asset that is mentioned within the story. For example, there is a relevant category that covers a number of measures of how relevant the news item is to the asset. Additionally, there is a sentiment category which tells us whether the news item refers to the asset in a positive, neutral, or negative manner, and so on. And finally, the data feed TRSI which provides moving averages of the TRNA sentiment scores. You can refer to the MRN documentation within the developer portal for more details. So let's walk through the general flow of how an application interacts with the Electron Real-Time Platform to get machine-readable news. When requesting for news, an application sends out a JSON request to the WebSocket server hosted within the Electron Platform. The request contains some key elements such as the news text analytics domain, which represents our domain containing all our MRN data feeds. Because I am specifically interested in headlines and stories within MRN, I specify the MRN underscore story item name, which is our real-time news data feed. Just a side note, the flow I'm going to be describing here also applies to all the MRN data feeds available. When Electron receives the request, a news stream is open, which results in our news headlines and stories being sent back to us in real time. What comes back are message envelopes, which contain our compressed news fragments. In some cases, the stories may be quite long, and as a result, the fragments of news will span across multiple messages. As you can see, an envelope will contain some key elements in order for our application to identify which news fragments are linked together. The fragments identified within each envelope are compressed. As a result, the application is required to concatenate all fragments and decompress the result. The resulting decompressed data will be a JSON object containing the contents of your news. In my case, the headline and story. When the Electron WebSocket API was released, we also held a webinar event which walked through the basics of interfacing with Electron to receive market data. 
In that webinar, I demonstrated a simple use case of bringing in real-time market data to a quote widget, showing streaming quotes and trades providing color animation. An article is available on our developer portal referencing full source code if interested. In that webinar, I also showed a value add layer called Tier WebSocket Controller, which is used by the quote widget providing all the heavy lifting of connecting and interfacing with the Electron backend. Clearly, there was an opportunity here to not only benefit from the basic connection and communication, but also manage all the envelope connection we see here when communicating with MRN. MRN is a more complex domain, thus there is much to gain by creating additional value to manage all the mechanics around collecting news fragments, concatenating and decompressing the data. The TR WebSocket controller is the sub-module I mentioned earlier when you clone the news monitor application. So what does it do and how easy is it? In general, it is the job of this controller to identify which fragments are related, combine them together, and uncompress the complete unit. The result is a complete story which includes the headline and body to be ready for consumption for our application. To initiate communication, I first connect and log into the Electron platform. All communication is asynchronous, so requests such as connecting, logging in, Fetching data will result in asynchronous events generated and captured within application supplied callbacks. So, to capture general connection and status events, I define the callback on status. In my case, I'm showing that once I detect I have successfully logged in, I request to open the new stream. The parameter passed in represents the data feed within Electron that supports real time news. This request will start streaming real-time headlines and stories to a defined callback. The core of the application is effectively outlined in the above code segments. What remains is mostly data, model management, and UI presentation. So let's look at the news monitor and the main application components. The news monitor is a fairly simple HTML widget built on top of AngularJS and Bootstrap CSS. AngularJS is a popular client-side JavaScript framework ideal for real-time displays. This coupled with Bootstrap CSS provides me the ability to easily work with streaming data and present it to the screen. AngularJS utilizes the model view controller pattern, which provides a clean separation between the view and the data. The core of the application is to retrieve real-time content from Electron, organize and populate a logical model used by the view. All communication to Electron is through HTML5 WebSockets. As I've just shown, I created the value add reusable layer TR WebSocket controller to manage all the work related to interfacing with Electron, processing news fragments, decompressing, and presenting the result to our application. When creating the news monitor, choosing AngularJS as the client side framework was purely based on familiarity and ease of use. Many technologies are equally capable of delivering the same result. Frameworks such as React.js, Vue, Ember could have been used. That is, developers can easily replace their technology of choice when building interfaces to the Electron WebSocket service. Now that you have a high level understanding of the components used in this application, I'm going to show you how I presented the data to the screen. Looking at our display, you see rows of headlines where users can optionally click to display the body related to that story. For each row, I'm showing some basic elements. As you would expect, the time column represents the time the story was created. In addition, I have also the RICS, if available, and the headline associated with the story. Within our HTML file segment below, contains the HTML responsible for displaying these elements. I did remove the CSS here so I can focus on content. If you are familiar with AngularJS, this syntax should be somewhat familiar. If not, you can probably guess what is happening here. We have a repeat block which will walk through the stories that I've defined within my data model, the news headlines you see above, specifically all the stories defined within my data model object called news. For each row, I'm referencing the elements associated with the news item or story. 
to understand the flow within my JavaScript code as each story is presented to my callback, I'm appending it to my data model. It is this data object I am directly referencing from HTML which provides a clean separation between the view and the model. It is important to note that the data coming from our server has not been transformed or modified in any way to suit my display. However, looking at the attributes I have defined, not every one is display ready. For example, the first created attribute comes in as a fully qualified date. With the display above, I only want the time. The subjects attribute is an array that has embedded inside the ricks I want to be displayed on the screen, specifically the elements within that array as identified by the R colon. You can see I have two ricks associated with this story, cyou.o and bold.o. Given this, I obviously don't want to present the raw data to my display. The easy way out is to simply modify the data model within my JavaScript code and map the data to display attributes that would allow me to directly present my desired results to the screen. For example, I could easily modify the first created date and pull out the time contents in the format needed. However, I'm not really keeping a clean separation between view and model. For more complicated applications, I may want to display this data in multiple ways. I don't want to create multiple display elements as part of my data model. Instead, AngularJS has a convenient feature called filters. Looking at the syntax below, you will see the fields of interest followed by the pipe symbol. On the right of this expression contains the filter function that will take the raw content and display based on the specified filter. For example, the time column is piped through the built-in Angular date filter using syntax that will result in a value you see in the above screenshot. In the case of the Ricks column, I'm using two filters. The first one, called filter, is a built-in Angular filter that selects a subset of the items from my array. If I were to stop there, the result will look like this a common separated array. While this is close, I want to specialize my output to be space separated values. To pull this off, I can create a custom filter called ricklist. Within JavaScript is where I pull out the contents and reformat to suit my display, as you can see in the above screenshot. Another nice little feature included is the ability to filter the stories themselves. In the above image, you can see an animation of me filtering out stories as I enter values. Specifically, I provide an input window that will filter out only those headlines based on the ricks associated with that story. To do this, I can ingest the filter expression on the data model to filter out headlines that contain ricks based on my input selection. The full expression isn't shown here, but the idea is that as we type within our input window, the select filter field will be applied to this filter expression. Angular is a nice fit to work with streaming data, allowing the user to view data in real time. However, as mentioned earlier, many other frameworks should be able to easily fit within these application components. As a final reminder, you can refer to the WebSocket API webinar on the developer portal and certainly refer to the growing collection of articles and tutorials that currently exist and those we plan to continually add. Thanks for watching.